Alright guys, welcome to another video. This will be an update video. I know I haven't posted in a minute. Um, you know, there's so much going on in the background that sometimes I don't even find time to record videos. But um, I might as well give you guys an update that you guys know what's going on. Um, so yeah. Alright, so I'm having some issues and let me explain. One both of these printers have been giving me issues and for one that's because you know my wife sometimes sitting in here with me while we're printing abs you know i don't care because the door is open sometimes the windows open so we're venting out the stuff it's not really lingering around but the other day it was really strong like i mean the abs smell was really strong coming through everywhere so i resealed my printers Okay, so I reseal them as you can see it's kind of like a sticky tape in between I had the glass precisely cut so that way I can stick it down with sticky tape there's also foam in between some nice thick foam three millimeter thick foam so it's sealed well that introduced a problem and a problem is the chamber got efficiently hot you <laughs> know that's the best way to put it it got efficiently hot to the point where I'm having nothing but extruder jams. So essentially what's happening is that before there's some gaps, you know, and there's some still some gaps, but but there's enough gap to equalize the amount of heat that is being built up in the top chamber here. So basically it's kind of equalizing each other. It stayed at a steady temperature. <laughs> well, because i redid the redid the setup to minimize the smell of abs and also just sealing as best as possible that made the chamber got even hotter hot enough where the the the, the fan in the front that blows on the hot end was just pushing nothing but the hot hair like i'm talking about 65 degrees this thing hit 65 degrees and just pushing nothing but 65 degrees hot here on the, the hot end itself, which is already pushing about 240, 250. And it just caused jam. And I've been having nothing but jam ever since. Just because I closed it up so efficiently where hot air can't escape as good. And so, yeah, which, which is a good thing, right? It's good to have a hot chamber. It just means that the material um, will stay down better, warp less, everything. That's why I don't have to use a brim. You notice I don't use a brim with my prints. But it also makes the chamber way too hot, too hot enough where that the amount of air that's being blown, the temperature on the air that's being blown on the nozzle, the hot end, is causing it to slowly warm up and causing the filament on the inside to soften and jam. Now, luckily the jam that I'm having is not something super serious. All I gotta do is on, you know, take off the nozzle, you know, heat it up really hot, push uh, a, you know, the size of a filament in push out whatever is causing it and clean it back up and put it back in and it works so right now this is what i have to be doing there's a gap to allow some some heat to come out because if not it's gonna jam again so yeah just wanted to point that out that while it's beneficial to make it hot as possible uh, it might work against you um, given the scenario here. So I just want to point that out. That's what I'm noticing, but I'm happy it gets hot. Don't get me wrong. I'm so happy that it gets hot. It just, we got to figure out a different way to cool off the hot end and not cause the jam. So maybe water cooling, we'll see. My, maybe something I experiment with in the future if the chamber is going to get this hot. Um, 
some I have some video coming. I want it, um, so I'm gonna continue my Clipper series. I'm gonna do a clippy, clicky probe update, how to set up clicky probe, how to set up the nozzle brush, kind of like that coming because I know some of you guys are looking for that. I know someone requested that I explain macros. Um, I'm gonna do a little study up on that. I haven't had a chance to study that, so that's something I would like to explain. How you know what is macros, how does it work, and stuff like that. So I would like to study that some in depth and then you know break it down the best way I know how I'm presenting that as a part of my clipper series as well. Um right now uh this was the project that I haven't updated. So this is my enrage carrot wrap enrage carrot feeder essentially and um it's doing its thing as you can see but I want to do a separate video on this is this giving you an update but I want to do a separate video on how to get this working properly. I know Nero has his video series, um, but I want to go further than Nero in terms of in depth of like what to avoid, what to change, because I'm running into some issues here. And, 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 and don't get me wrong, it's doing its thing, as you can see. It actually does the changeover, um, but there's times it just, it won't want to change. And so I want to go through that with you guys once I get it all dialed in. Um, also updated my switch wire. I went with a thicker bed. This is a six mil six millimeter thick, three inch by three inch um, um, bed. Um, so just for the fact that um, you know, just to get a level of bed, because the stock three hundred and ten millimeter bed that comes with the Sunlu, you know, like the Creality style of bed, um, it tends to have a lot of warping issues. Um, and that's why a lot of people use glass with those beds because glass are you know typically flatter than the actual aluminum. But in this case, I went with a thicker aluminum bed. Um, I'm using a 500 watt um, heater underneath it. Not that I'm gonna you know, ever hit 100 degrees on this. It's really to print PTG and PLA and for this stuff, you know, it's a multi-color print. But that's all it's really there for. I'd rather just upgraded the bed because you know I wanted to heat up faster and I don't have to wait on it. Um, so I updated that. Um, wired up everything neatly as you can see my raspberry pi is permanently mounted back there um the extra board this is a skr e3 mini 1.2 to run the uh the rabbit carrot feeder so i think it's neatly neatly mounted there this is a six port version i was gonna build a nine port but that was gonna be a little overkill um that's just a little too much so yeah that's a bit of an overkill so i think six port is plenty and this is my makeshift uh, buffer right now at the moment um, to keep everything plain plain fair so we'll do a more detailed in-depth talk about this in another video just want to update you guys of course this is still running good um, had to shorten the Bowden tube it was way too long I had to mount the extruder up here because the problem is the Bowden tube was so long on the on the legacy that what will happen is it was pointless to run any pressure advance. This Bowden tube so long that pressure advance didn't even matter. You won't, there was no difference. So I shortened the Bowden tube and that made pressure advance uh, a thing again with this and also allow me to print PTG because again, with the Bowden tube so long, PTG was just not having it, man. So shortening the Bowden tube a little bit and moving the extruder from the, from the side to the top actually helped with it printing much better, 10 times better than it was before. So I'm so happy about that, um, that it works now. Um, yeah, I haven't used this thing because, you know, I refuse to use Prusa Slicer and I, don't get me wrong, I'm using this with Prusa Slicer because that's the only thing that supports it. I still hate Prusa Slicer. I hate Super Slicer, Prusa Slicer. I'm just gonna voice my disdain. They're confusing to use and I, even, though I'm, I, even though I'm having a little bit of success using it, I still think Cura is better, again, in my opinion, user interface wise. The way things are laid out in Cura, I think it's just so much better for me. Prusa is completely annoying. Even, even messing with, listen, as f uh, even with the fan, just to get that fan to stay at 100%, you have to be messing with weird settings. They complicate a regular park cooling fan, dude. Like, I, I can't stand Prusa Slicer. But I have to admit, they have the feature I need in order to sorry about that guys but i can't believe they complicate the fan but anyways i'm gonna stop running and push the slicer i mean i gotta admit that it has the features you know the paint on features to paint any stl hopefully cura has that in the future i'm praying cura get those features we can paint the stl all that fancy stuff because 
I just, I just cannot stand Pusha Slice or Super Slice. I'm sorry, guys. I, you just, ah, uh, anyways. But now that I somewhat know how to use Pusha Slicer a little bit, I'm gonna give this some life because I do, I have dual um, M4s on this, and um, so I want to be able to utilize this. But I will also do the same thing. I'm gonna run a uh, AC silicon bed with a uh, with a six millimeter uh, aluminum on this, so this will also get an upgrade. I know I haven't shown this on the channel since I built it. That's because I haven't been messing with it because I was trying to figure out how to do the dual extrusion with Cura. And honestly, Cura is not as intuitive in terms of setting it up. Like it, it's perch tower is totally different. Um, I've gotten it to work, but it's just not as consistent. So I'm gonna use push the slicer for now for this. But once Cura get the features I'm looking for, then I'm going straight Cura um, um, with this. So. But this just needs an update. Um, I'm also running an SKR2 in this. Um, I, um, I got rid of the SKR 1.4. And same thing, I'm going to be running an SKR2 in this. Um, this thing hasn't been printing, and here's why. I, I haven't been using it and utilizing it at all. And the only reason why is because it, it doesn't get as hot. Like, these things, again, get hot. Like, I can print abs all day on these things this thing because of that this tall chamber one it takes a while to heat up and two i'm gonna have to reseal this essentially i'm gonna take this off take off all the the uh acrylic and i'm gonna go glass as well i'm just gonna go glass and seal them with the um seal them just like i did with this with glass and i think that will kind of help trap the heat a bit better and heat it up and then I'll start utilizing it like it's supposed to. But right now, it haven't been printing or haven't been utilized just because it, I'm just tired of, of ABS warping off the bed, no matter what. So that's 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 a project in place. So, yep, but right now it's just the Iron Man and my Venom that print out uh, PIF parts all day long. Again, other than the them getting way too hot where I have to literally leave a gap as you can see there's a gap there just to prevent this thing from getting so hot um so that way um you know the extruder won't jam um but other than that guys there's more to come just trying to sort out you know everything so that way i can get you guys video on a regular basis <laughs> and get some of these projects out of hand there's also this to be done as well um i want to live stream this but this will become another voron 1.8 and um so i want to live stream this bill i think this would be an awesome bill to live stream and i'm gonna try to get myself in a proper way that means get everything prepped properly when i'm doing the live stream so i'm not hunting for things i'm not you know uh uh wondering if i got everything so i want to just be prepared for that live stream um so yeah but other than that guys just want to give you an update if you notice i changed the room over a little bit so i'll change the room just to give me some more space just because i have so much printers so yeah well anyway guys i just want to update you guys i'm still alive there i'm still doing things in the background there's more videos to come like subscribe share and i see you guys in the next one peace